Hi everyone, Greg Martin and Chris Hunter with Aggie Growth Hacks. And we got a little question for you, Ags. How do you start a business in your dorm room, grow it into a multi-million dollar business, sell it, invest in yourself, and start another multi-million dollar business all within seven years of graduating from Texas A&M? Well, stay tuned. On this episode of Aggie Growth Hacks, we're going to talk with Josh Zapalak with EcoZap. Check it out. Howdy. Welcome to another episode of Aggie Growth Hacks. My name is Greg Martin. I'm Fighting Texas Aggie Class of 2001, alongside my co-host, Chris Hunter, Fighting Texas Aggie Class of 1998. And today we've got a special treat for you. Uh, we are talking with Josh Zapalak, Fighting Class Aggie Class of 2012. Sir. He is the CEO of a lot of companies, but most recently EcoZap. So Josh, thank you so much for taking time to, to speak with us today and allowing us to, to learn about you and to connect with you. Glad to be here. It's Aggie 100 weekend, fun day of the year. Well, congratulations on, on another Aggie 100 nomination. And, thank you. And congratulations on continued success within your business. You, you have, just knowing a little bit about your history, I know that you have you have grown and, and you've exited one business already yes. uh, since 2012. And so, I mean, that that's an amazing feat. But let's kind of go back a little bit. What what caused you? What wanted you to start your own business? Uh, I think I grew up in the fa family pest control business. So I was kind of in already involved in a pest control family run business uh, for about, I guess, almost 12, 15 years until I you know came to college, graduated. Um, I started a turtle trap business uh, when I was in middle school. So I kind of had an entrepreneur business hustle per se yep. going on most of my entire life. That's awesome. So we, we did that, got the AM, started EcoZap while I was still in school, uh, built that up. To so become, while you were a student? While we were a student, yes. Wow. As juniors, I believe. Awesome. Yes. So, in architecture. <laughs> so, from architecture to pest control, to Christmas lights to HVAC. So, made the circle. That's, that is very <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, you had a ton of time on your hands. Uh, we had more time then than I do have now, yes. Uh, that, that is one secret uh, I wish I could tell myself back then is you have all the time in the world when you're in college. Awesome. When you get in college, you have almost no time. Like yeah. The chance to sit down and read a book now is is difficult. Yeah. So yeah. appreciate it when you have it. Yeah. So how did your Aggie experience uh, really help you grow you know, Equals App? How, how, did, how, did, how did that really help you uh, further everything? Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with the uh, incubator and the support system. Uh, mm -hmm. Startup Aguiland, uh, Ronnie Hill helped us get started back in his classes uh, 10 years ago now. Me and my wife were in his, many of his classes in architecture. Um, so he kind of helped uh, transition us from, you know, student startup. Push it, he helped kind of develop Startup Aguiland a little bit. Yeah. So we kind of went through that path. Um, really just the, the hub around College Station. You know, we were still a student. Uh, College Station is big enough so you can, you know, go hit the boots and hit the doors. Uh, you know, we went door to door and hung door hangers for, Good for you. the first yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Uh, started with, you know, 1,500 door hangers about that tall. Thought we we're going to be, you know, rich, have all the customers in the world. Yeah. Uh, found out really fast, you know, how many door hangers it takes to get one customer. <laughs> uh, so we started getting better at marketing and started building and just gaining customer here, customer there. Um, started keeping tabs of, you know, our growth and customers and Sell it every day to gain one customer, and gain two, then gain three, yeah. and put three customers on the board every day for three or four years, and that's right. the name of the game. So. That, that's a, you know, continue to bring value to your customers and to be able to have that. So, yeah. so but that that that's a lot of challenges within that growth cycle, and then you know, even as you're you're getting your first customer to your hundredth, to your thousands, to your ten thousands. Yeah. What what really has been the biggest challenge that you've had to growing a business, and then how have you overcome it? Probably wearing less hats, finding yourself as fast as possible, and focusing on your top one or two priorities of the day. Yes. If you have three, you're richer in dangerous territory. Yeah. And I woke up tomorrow morning, and my only goal was to, you know, come get a million and a half dollars from the Aggie Angels, um, come get a pitch afterwards, yeah. and then come do the Aggie 100 thing afterwards with my team. Yeah. Uh, those are my one, two, three things today. If I had to think about how to drive here this morning, I probably wouldn't have made it, you know? <laughs> so uh, focusing on your, your top priorities of the day, every day, every month, every quarter, every year, um, and really um, becoming a seasoned entrepreneur with a focused path. Yeah. Most entrepreneurs go every which direction and they just spin in circles for year after year after year, yeah. not really making traction and progress because everything's an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, we would literally said no to almost everything and uh, with this new business, we're at home services, home AC services, right, right. Um, which is not really too specific, not too niche, 
But the AC industry's massive $100 billion a year conglomerate from ice machines, new construction here in Kyle Field, someone's got to replace their AC system. Yeah. I think Texas Longhorns AC system went out a couple of weeks ago at their football stadium, yep. their locker yeah. room. You know, there's an AC guy that needs to go change that football stadium. Yeah. Uh, system during, lot, during half time. Uh, we don't want that business. We want the homeowner to call us. Uh, we know walking into white carpet, we know walking into old AC systems, uh, all of our team efforts, marketing operations are all focused on uh, homeowners and old AC systems. Yeah. Um, that's about as niche as we can get in the industry. If we take on business that's commercial, ice chest, or this or that, every, every minute we spend talking about that even now is one minute that we left yeah. on a table for yeah. replacements. Right. I could have missed an AC replacements five more times, but now I'm talking about yeah. Yeah. losing focus. So not losing focus is probably one of the main uh, drivers, I would say, of most entrepreneurs. Uh, it, once you lose focus, there's too many things coming at you. You're just not going to get anything done that day. So, yeah. Josh, how did, how did you do that? How did you teach yourself and your team to prioritize, to have the courage to say, this is the top two things and everything else uh, not as important. I think a combination of just a lot of sales books, literature, knowledge, conferences. When we sold our, our first business a couple years ago, we invested you know 80, almost eighty five thousand dollars, me and my wife, the next year in just education, uh, yeah. conferences, yeah. seminars, wow. plane tickets, um, you know, back and forth. Those are expensive weekends, yeah. but if you gain one or two gold nuggets out of the weekend, you gain something. Uh, but I think a lot of it was all those books. You know, Richard Branson's books, even Elon Musk, all, all these books are just really focused on one thing, their vision, go achieve it. Yeah. You know, Richard Branson's famous for saying no to everything in the world besides yeah. his one thing that day. Right. Well, that's how he gets that one thing done. Yeah. Otherwise, he's going to be on some speaking gig for $100,000, not trying to go right. compete with Elon for a space race. Right. You know, Elon's over here trying to hit the moon. He's not worrying about, you know, what he's wearing that morning. Yeah. Um, and I think the entrepreneurs organization hey, that we've joined locally in the past two years has kind of helped refine that um, and introduce us to a um, a higher network of entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Because there's, there's classifications to get into yep. the entrepreneurs organization, which used to be called the Young Entrepreneurs Organization. Um, but that introduced you up to a room of 500 successful business owners. And we're the youngest, brokest, most unachieved ones in there when we're sitting next to people running $100 million companies. Right. Uh, we all have the same problems almost across the board is just the numbers are different. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, the headaches are almost all the same. Wow, that's awesome. And their headaches and my headaches uh, get a group of people together and the common denominators are focus, culture, and building your team. And if you focus on culture, building your team and your processes, you know, it's kind of like that Marcus Lemonis, the rest will probably take care of yep. itself. Yep. And, and then lots of sales. Yeah. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> lots of sales. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So what's, um, all right, Switching gears a little bit here, right? Um, you said you're an EO member. Yes, sir. What's your BHAG? What's your big, hairy, audacious goal? Um, to big, hairy, audacious goal is to build an empire of good, uh, not evil. Um, right now, we're focusing on scaling our AC operations. So right now, we're, our big, audacious goal right now is, or today, is to gain a million and a half dollars of working capital investment mm-hmm. to help continue growth or both their brand class station and Houston markets to get to about $10 million dollar in revenue in about two years is our goal. Um, And then after that, we want to take it and scale it to about 25. Um, We're really targeting replacing older R22 systems, which are bad for the ozone, bad energy bills, and they leave homeowners with terrible indoor air quality, mold growth inside your air ducts with old systems. It's just a bad equation on three different levels. Uh, Bad for the ozone, bad for the energy, bad for your indoor health. Uh, If we replace 10, 20 of these systems a day, we're helping homeowners cut their energy bills, wash away the high expensive AC bill every month for a new system that's blowing cleaner air and not dumping R22 into the ozone. Yeah. Uh, a system leaking R22 every year, if your system is about 10, 15 years old, mm-hmm. if you get it pumped up with three or four pounds of R22, that R22 kills 100,000 molecules per molecule of the ozone. So one equals 100,000. Wow. So if you gas up your AC system with three or four pounds per year, that's killing more ozone than your car is with the gasoline wow. and that's before the energy wow. so systems that saw 15 20 years ago that run forever and people love to brag how long they run well that 10 sear then goes down three percent every year or more right. you know four, 14 sear is the minimum now and most systems even in cost station are operating at 
not even half capacity or they started. Right. Yeah. So a 10 going down to a five is a long way from a 14, 16 or a 20. Right. Um, and this is the whole problem that we're all going to be facing with energy. Um, the climate crisis is getting hot topic now the next couple of years in the political uh, arenas. Um, the matter of it is all these systems are being phased out and it's kind of like the plastic straw debate, you know, yeah. it's not, it's not a hot topic yet because it's a, it's a bad habit. We all, participate in right I mean, but this is really so that when you when i hear you say you are building something and an, an engine for good it's not just good for you as a business yeah and, and one world, thing we learned about the pest control world. business is you know we've had probably about six to eight i think now companies spin off after they've left eco's app uh oh, wow. you know a lot more in the trades industry when a trade gets his license either pest control license or a plumber's license or ac license they can go start their own business right. go buy one truck one set of tools and they're their own business. Right. Um, part of that Empower Good is we want to foster a organization where we bring in that talent who wants to be a small business owner, but doesn't need to be a small business owner. Right. Small business owners is wears too many hats, is not focused, come foster your talent with us and grow and we're almost treat you like you are a small business owner. Right. And we can just put you on the things that you're good at versus sweeping the floors and paying payroll and all the other stuff. Yeah. Which allows us to bring in the $1 million, $2 million a year producers of talent, huh. get them licensed. Like right now, we're, we're getting our installers licensed here, usually the labor, hot, dirty addicts, dirty jobs. Um, all of our crew, are, we're trying to get licensed. So that installer who spends three or four years with us breaking his, you know, it's, yeah. it's hard labor. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is. Yeah. But they can go get their license and learn to sell within four years of working for us and go start their own business one day if they wanted to, or go start another eco that business. Right. Uh, we're not going to be counterproductive to that because it's one of those, if we don't train them and promote them, they're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep bad people long term. Yeah. Yeah. I really train the good people and have them leave us on good terms right. and go forth and prosper. Uh, prosper. Uh, if you drive to Houston, you can pass like 10,000 AC guys on your way there. Yeah. Um, at, just pull up to a four-way stop sign and three of the three of the lights are going to have an AC guy sitting there. Yeah. So I'm not really worried about my 10,000 competitors. Yeah. We want to bring in the talent, foster it, get them licensed and help us grow. Or, you know, hey, there's yeah. a million AC guys out there to do it yourself. That, that but if I could is... spend four years with them, I get a four-year talented employee with the industry that has a terrible turnover. Right. That that and is and this is not worth it. An amazing, big, very audacious goal. So that, yeah. that's great. Well, Josh, we're gonna we're gonna kind of uh, flip the script a little. We're gonna go into to lightning round. So you've got three minutes to answer these questions. Cool. Or, or however long it takes you to, to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> but can you can you describe for us the perfect client, the, the client that you enjoy? Serving and the client that gets the most out of you and the EcoZap team? Uh, right now, it's a client that has two or three systems and about a 15, 20 year old house. Mm -hmm. um, their energy bills are $600 a month, cranking it. Um, they, got, they need their duct works replaced. They want the clean air. Uh, we get to take that customer. Uh, the thing about AC replacements versus AC services, AC guy comes to serve your system for, say, 10 years. Your system gets slowly worse and worse. We're taking the, the bad systems and making them so much better. Yeah, yeah. So it's a night and day difference that one day install that we leave behind. Right. It's not a gradual, yeah. oh, it feels a little bit better today than it did last week. No, it's a, like, my house has never felt this way. Yeah. Um, with the way we do duct works and the new efficient systems, uh, the media filters and the air quality products that we can put in your house, you're almost a clean room house. Uh, which means if I sneeze on you from three feet away, yeah. the Remy Halo products will kill 99% of the food germs before it hits you. Wow. Uh, if there's gum underneath this table or your kid's table in his bedroom, right. uh, the way it's purifying the air is it's, it's killing all VOCs, germs, viruses, yeah. even on gum. Yeah. Yeah. Because you basically have 0 0.02 parts per million landing all over your house, killing wow. allergens, bacon smell, water burger smell, yeah. VOCs, yeah. nasty smoke smells, you name it. Um, so that changes so people's lives. you got lives. an old, the old unit, you need to call Josh. Yeah. yeah. Old, Absolutely. inefficient, uh, smells. Uh, we, we specialize and we get there, pull up an install crew, and we're in and out, same day, complete new system, complete new house, which kind of turns into, I do have a degree in architecture, which is environmental design. Right. So we're, we're altering entire people's entire comfort of their house, basically, in one day. So All that's right, kind of so, fun. So next question, right? Lightning round. Think that, right? Okay. Uh, Advice that you would give yourself if uh, on graduation day from Texas A&M? Hmm. Go take out more student loans because no one's going to give you any more money <laughs> at that low interest rate. Um, probably get started, hit the boots on the ground, and start building my digital assets and give out as much free content as possible. 
Uh, one thing we're trying to do with our pest control business that we're, or our new business in Houston, since we have a non-compete pest control here is, we've been documenting our process for the past two years of everything we've been doing. Right. So we actually have one terabyte of, we have a documentary guy that comes and hangs around three days a week, basically. He films your addicts, he gets in the guys, you know, yep. whatever. Yep. Um, we plan on doing that for the pest control business and document everything exactly. Start, here's how you get your license, here's how you train. Start to finish, here's how you sell, here's how you build, here's how you exit, yeah. and give all that away for free on YouTube, Facebook, the internet right. to use as content marketing. You know, this is about yep. growth hacking. Yeah, that's so that's, right. that's marketing. Yeah. It's not wasted radio, TV. Right. That's building my assets, building my audience. I get to multi-purpose it, spin it back around. So right. the homeowner that's seeing that on Facebook is seeing my technician who's going to yeah. come to her house in that van. So it's almost like the macro celebrity that trust factor is just... Through the roof. Right. Through the roof I mean, versus and you open up phone do, book. You do a really, really good job Thank on you. the social media. I mean, yeah. I know that both on I know, LinkedIn. I'm more on LinkedIn yeah. than than Facebook, but definitely see the videos you've got. So, so you know, Thank great you. job. So that that's working. What's one thing that we don't know about you? I put myself through a lot of college playing poker, I guess, would be one. Really? Um, last year, I went to the main event after we, you know, sold. So I made the main event World Series of Poker Tournament. Um, but yeah, I, play, I put myself through a lot of college playing poker. Um, I actually right. had more money in my pocket on a random day in class than most people would ever <laughs> That's think awesome. about. That's awesome. Um, that is uh, a fun and, fact. And, 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 and that was in the online poker day. So like literally I'm going through school and not yeah. studying architecture, reading poker books and marketing books. Uh, so like marketing poker books kind of just probably mash yeah, cool. a little bit. Uh, but it's a lot of business in poker strategy. You so know, what kind of poker? Are you... uh, mainly Hold'em is, Hold you know, the yep. big tournaments. I'm so you get at reading people then. Yeah, yeah. I, I was really good at reading people, you yeah. know, through a multi-day tournament. Right. You know, I, I'm a tournament player. I want to go to the end. I'm not worried about that, yeah. you know, win-lose one day versus the next. Right. I want I want that championship, right. you know, 14-day poker tournament, you know, just <laughs> that overall just marathon of it. Yep. All so. right, last question. How can the Aggie Network help you? Give us a million dollars today investment for our businesses. Um, no, <laughs> I mean, that'd be a great reason. Uh, buy more AC systems uh, from local Aggie owned AC companies, which is right. not very many of them. Right. Um, but probably, you probably help the community and just keep reaching out to entrepreneurs who are trying. Um, Ryan College Station is still kind of a tier two market. It doesn't have the opportunity of, you know, Austin and Houston. Right. And we're losing out a lot of entrepreneur hubs to Austin. Uh, up, you know, even in Denver is a hub, Seattle, yeah. you know, Seattle is far away across the country, but Denver and Austin, about the two major ones, uh, even their EO group here locally, you know, we're, we're trying to grow and find people in the community to bring in, but it really kind of starts a, you know, startup Aguiland incubator, work yeah. their way up. So in five years, there's that nonstop pipeline of, right. you know, startup Aguiland for my dear student. Oh, five years later, you're still in the community instead of just all these students bolting out of college station. Right. Uh, graduation, if they if y'all foster and incubate them while they're here, they might go make fifty thousand dollars a year. You know, their senior year in college doing something. Right. But that fifty thousand dollars a year is a hell of a lot better than going to get a job to make almost nothing. But at least they've started. Right. You know, fifty thousand dollars a year when you're twenty something, you can go absolutely broke in four years. And what difference does it make? You're, you're fifty other thousand students on here right. who think they're broke and think they don't have no time and. Who, who have all these thoughts in their head, but they're not doing anything. Right. Well, yeah. Josh, thank you so much for the opportunity to to learn from you and to just connect with you awesome. today. Really yeah. appreciate the the wisdom that you dropped. And and so everyone listening, if you have not connected with Josh and the team at EcoZap, uh, make sure that you do that. We'll go ahead and we'll have the uh, the contact information below. Uh, but uh, make sure you join us next time. Until then, thanks and gig them. Wow, what a great interview with uh, Josh Zapalak with uh, EcoZap. Uh, man, that, uh, let's let's talk about this thing. Let's let's figure out exactly what was your biggest takeaway. What an amazing guy. Well, my number one takeaway that I have had from Josh was that entrepreneurs need to invest in themselves. He had the opportunity after he exited to be able to have some capital, yeah. and what did he do with it? He invested in himself. And his team. I know, a lot of money. That's that was, amazing. That was an amazing amount of money yes. that they spent on going and doing all that. that and it's obviously served them well. Wow. Yeah. What about my, you? My biggest was uh, basically saying no, right? Saying no to everything that wasn't exactly what he needed to do that day, that month, that year, right? And that's something me as an entrepreneur myself, I need to do more of and just say no. 
right? Go back to the <laughs> just saying no, I, can't uh, you know stuff. So you, you got to be focused. You've got to yeah. understand what your number one priority is, and right. everything that doesn't help that. Yep, I agree. I agree. Pull it out. That's yep. good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us here on Aggie Growth Hacks, where we figure out exactly what hacks that each Aggie entrepreneur used to get to where they're at now. Join us next time. We're going to be talking to some other Aggies. Thanks to Gig'em. <laughs>